Hey everyone, these are the brand new Fast and Large Elegoo Neptune 4, the Neptune 4 Plus and the Neptune 4 Max 3D printers. And there are things that Elegoo is not telling us about these machines and that's why I am making this video because as I've been playing around with them over the past week or two, I have found out some really cool things about these machines that I have to tell you about. And the very first thing that I wanna cover with you all is probably the most important thing. So if you do take away anything that I talk about in this video, hopefully you hear this one right here and that there is no end stop on either the X and Y axis for these printers, which thoroughly confused me when I got these things up and assembled because I thought they were missing. But no, it's just the new design. Because these are running Clipper-based software on the inside of the machines for the internals, there's this funky technology baked into it that's gonna allow it to detect when it hits the homing areas for the X and Y and properly adjust itself. The other reason why I'm calling this out is because if you get either of these machines and after getting them assembled and trying to home and it's making a thudding or grinding noise as it's trying to home and then proceeds on with its printing or homing, then you probably need to update the firmware on these machines. Now, so I'm just jumping in here. I'm in the middle of editing the video and I wanted to let you know that there is another way that you can do this. It's so much easier. I have linked down below to the Feral Engineers video that covers how to actually correct this without doing a firmware update. All you do is need to connect your printer to your network so that you can access the Clipper interface and then you need to change a few lines of code to correct this. It's so much easier. You don't need to reach out to Elegoo, get the firmware, do the whole firmware update process. Yeah, this is just so much more straightforward and streamlined. Now, both of these printers are almost identical other than one is slightly larger than the other. But one difference between them is that the Neptune 4 Max actually has a drawer in the front of the machine allowing you to easily store any of the accessories or bits that you might need for the printer. Now, one thing that both of these printers are sporting that none of the other Elegoo Neptune 3D printers have is a large insulated pad on the underside of the build plate surface. This is gonna allow it to have have a much more consistent heated experience across the entire large build plate surface. Another upgrade compared to the previous iterations of these machines is that these include better bed springs for leveling of the build plates for the 3D printers. Now again, this does have auto leveling built into it. And I think there's like 129 or 121 points of leveling for the build plates here across these 3D printers. However, there are still six individual knobs so that you can manually level first and then do your auto leveling, which is for me a fantastic feature because I have some other large 3D printers that just have the auto mesh leveling and in some corners it's not exactly perfect and I wish they had the ability to adjust those individual points so I could raise or lower it as needed. Another really great surprise that I found on both of these 3D printers is that there's an accelerometer built into them and since they're running clipper you can run input shaping on the X and Y axis for both of these machines to help dial in your 3D prints and speaking of which there's even PID tuning as an option option. Both of these input shaping and PID tuning are directly available through the interface of the control panel of the printer. Also, highly recommend running those once you have them set up before you run off and start 3D printing things. And speaking of printing things, both of these machines come stock with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Now that is a custom designed nozzle. So uh, at the moment, it's a little bit hard to find different size options for this. Elegoo is actively working on that. And I believe even potential third parties are working on developing different nozzle options for this machine, but your standard volcano nozzle isn't the same size lengthwise as what comes with these machines. So keep that in mind. But with the 0.4 nozzle, these things are still printing drastically faster than what I'm seeing with my 0.6 nozzles on my standard 3 max and 3 plus. And one other random feature that I just wanted to call out that I love using here in the studio is these machines, along with the previous iterations of them, have these LED bars along the top. And the newer iterations now have LED lights built into the nozzle area. So as you're printing and trying to get a better look at your first layer adhesion, you can definitely do that by enabling those lights on the control panel unit. This next one absolutely shocked me the first time I saw, and it has to do with the preheating or heating up of your nozzle before running off and printing anything. These things heat up so stupidly fast to 
200 to 220 is typically around what I print at and it takes about 35 to 45 seconds for this to heat up. Now for these Neptune printers, that is incredibly fast compared to their previous iterations. And I know we've started to see this on some other machines out there and it's really exciting to see that on these budget friendly machines. And when it comes to printing really fast at those high temperatures, you're gonna need a lot of cooling, which is why we see these two large fans on the back of these machines. On the previous iterations of the Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 Pro, the smaller versions of these printers, there were four sets of smaller fans, but on these larger, the Plus and the 4 Max, we now have two really large fans pulling in air and blowing them forward at the nozzle while we're printing. And obviously those kick up a lot of noise when it's printing. You also have the ability to disable that entirely if you wanna shut those off and try and print without those fans in place. I still haven't done any testing with that, but I'll definitely be doing some comparisons of the fan on versus the fan off and showing you my results. And before we talk about my favorite unlisted feature, I wanted to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, Elegoo, the makers of these large format fast and affordable 3D printers. The Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus is $350 and has a build volume of 320 by 320 by 385 millimeters. And we also have the Neptune 4 Max coming in at $470 with a build volume of 420 by 420 by 480 millimeters high. I also wanted to call out that Elegoo has some brand new amazing color filaments that you can find over on Amazon for about 20 bucks or less. This is their new Galaxy Black PLA and it might be one of my new favorite colors of filament that I've seen. It's like a bluish, purplish, glittery, black, glossy filament and just looks spectacular. And one thing that these 3D printers have that the other Neptune 3D printers don't have, not even the Neptune 4 or the 4 Pro, is a wireless dongle on the side. This allows you to wirelessly connect your 3D printer to your network where you can access the Clipper interface directly from your browser or inside directly within some of your slicers, allowing you to directly slice and send your prints straight to the 3D printer. It's amazing, I'm loving it. And what's even better than that is how fast it's able to actually transfer the files directly to the machines. And the setup of the Wi-Fi on these printers is so stupidly simple, just going into the settings, selecting your network, and then entering in your password. It's that simple, and there's gonna be an IP address that's given that you can then use to directly connect to this machine. And the printers do come with a version of Elegoo's Cura Slicer. However, I have recently moved over to Orca Slicer and managing the new Neptune 4 3D printers directly in Orca Slicer is is so simple and easy to work with. And then to connect your printer directly to Orca Slicer so that you can slice and send files directly to the printer, all you have to do is click on the Wi-Fi icon next to your printer profile, enter in the IP address that's on the screen inside of your printer, and that's it, it's connected. And then you can start slicing and sending print jobs directly to this machine. It's so stupidly simple and amazing. And what's even cooler about this is directly in Orca Slicer, there's a separate tab where you can directly see the Clipper interface. So you don't even have to open up a separate browser to get full access to the Clipperized version of the machine here with further access and controls. This also allows you, since this has onboard storage as well. You no longer need to use the included USB drive to store your files on the printer. That now frees up for you to be able to plug in a USB webcam directly into this printer. Now, that took a little bit of work for me to figure out and get up and running, but I was able to do it, and I'll include a link to the Reddit post that made this so much easier for me to work with, and if needed, I can go into more details on that in a separate post. One other thing that I'm absolutely loving about Orca Slicer over all the other slicers that are out there is you can have multiple build plates for managing large print projects, which is fantastic for these larger machines. So when I'm trying to print off a helmet that comes in multiple parts, I can load that in, auto arrange, and then I'll have multiple build plates I can start working with or adding more or removing as needed. Plus, it's really easy to manage filament profiles in the slicer, or they even have built-in filament tuning 
to directly dial in and perfect whatever it is filament that you're working with for the given machine that you're printing with. It's just, it's stupidly simple. And with that said, I'm working on creating profiles for both of these machines, along with a bunch of other 3D printers that I'm gonna be working with. I'm moving away from Prusa Slicer and going all in on Orca Slicer moving forward. So if you're interested in things like that, I wanna say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters because that is where you're gonna be able to find a lot of my printer profiles that I create and use for my different 3D printers, including the ones for these Neptune 4 3D printers. Now, obviously, as you can see here with some of these, like this gold silk Elegoo filament, I still need to dial in my settings a little bit more to perfect this, but overall, it's already looking pretty clean in the areas that it printed properly and where the supports didn't fail and some of those other fun things that I'm still working on there. But this print right here off the Neptune 4 Plus looks so buttery smooth. I am just blown away at the print quality that I'm getting out of both of these machines that are, again, are able to print really fast and still are very affordable. And again, I'll have two separate videos releasing next week, one on the Neptune 4 Plus, just showing off everything that I've printed with this thing over the past handful of weeks, what I love and what I don't love, and the Neptune 4 Max. Both of these machines have more or less just been printing pretty dang good. I've run into a few issues, I'll admit, but I think that might be on my end with some of the previous slicers and profiles. Again, just trying to dial in everything and starting to look really good with these printers. But let me know what you think about these new, fast, affordable 3D printers from Elegoo and what you'd like to see added to them in the future. I mean, obviously I'm loving the Wi-Fi, but I'd love it to be a little bit easier to be able to connect a camera directly to this or maybe an Elegoo mobile app so I can manage this on the go it would be pretty cool. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all and I'll see you next time.